Lesson 50. New Year Resolutions. Do you make New Year resolutions on the New Year's Day? Let's listen to the text to see what New Year resolutions the author made and answer this question. What marked the end of the writer's New Year resolutions? 什么标志着作者的新年决心已经无法实现了。The new year is a time for resolutions. Mentally, at least, most of us could compile formidable lists of do's and don'ts. The same old favorites recur year in, year out, with monotonous regularity. We resolve to get up earlier each morning, eat less, find more time to play with the children, do a thousand and one jobs about the house. Be nice to people we don't like. Drive carefully and take the dog for a walk every day. Past experience has taught us that certain accomplishments are beyond attainment. If we remain inveterate smokers, it is only because we have so often experienced the frustration that results from failure. Most of us fail in our efforts at self-improvement because our schemes are too ambitious and we never have time to carry them out. We also make the fundamental error of announcing our resolutions to everybody, so that we look even more foolish when we slip back into our bad old ways. Aware of these pitfalls, this year I attempted to keep my resolutions to myself. I limited myself to two modest ambitions. To do physical exercises every morning, and to read more of an evening. An all-night party on New Year's Eve provided me with a good excuse for not carrying out either of these new resolutions on the first day of the year. But on the second, I applied myself assiduously to the task. The daily exercises lasted only 11 minutes, and I proposed to do them early in the morning before anyone had got up. The self-discipline required to drag myself out of bed 11 minutes earlier than usual was considerable. Nevertheless, I managed to creep down into the living room for two days before anyone found me out. After jumping about on the carpet and twisting the human frame into uncomfortable positions, I sat down at the breakfast table in an exhausted condition. It was this that betrayed me. The next morning, the whole family trooped in to watch the performance. That was really unsettling, but I fended off the taunts and jibes of the family good-humouredly, and soon everybody got used to the idea. However, my enthusiasm waned. The time I spent at exercises gradually diminished. Little by little, the eleven minutes fell to zero. By January the 10th, I was back to where I had started from. I argued that if I spent less time exhausting myself at exercises in the morning, I would keep my mind fresh for reading when I got home from work. Resisting the hypnotizing effect of television, I sat in my room for a few evenings with my eyes glued to a book. One night, however, feeling cold and lonely, I went downstairs and sat in front of the television, pretending to read. That proved to be my undoing, for I soon got back to my old bad habit of dozing off in front of the screen. I still haven't given up my resolution to do more reading. In fact, I have just bought a book entitled How to Read a Thousand Words a Minute. Perhaps it will solve my problem, but I just haven't had time to read it. So what marked the end of the writer's New Year resolutions? Right, when he sat in front of the television, pretending to read. So this text is about New Year resolutions, for it is a tradition to make New Year resolutions on the New Year's Day for self-improvement. The author tells us about his resolutions by starting with the understanding that usually resolutions cannot be achieved because they are too ambitious. He thus made too modest ones. Even so, he failed again after trying for not too many days. But he still didn't give up completely, 
He just bought a book on reading, even though he didn't have time to read it yet. Okay, now let's look at some language points. Most of us could compile formidable lists of do's and don'ts. Compile means put together. Give you one more example. These notes were compiled from lectures and seminars. 这些笔记是从各种演讲和讨论中编纂出来的 Formidable lists. Formidable means causing respect or awe for being difficult to deal with. We can use it to describe something, for example, a formidable task or a formidable obstacle. We can also use it to describe a person, a formidable opponent, or a formidable enemy. Lists of do's and don'ts. Do's and don'ts means the things we should do or we shouldn't do. For example, the children's life there consists of don'ts instead of do's. 孩子们在那里的生活是由不要做什么，而不是说要做什么构成的。The same old favorites recur year in and year out. The same old something is an often used structure, means the very familiar something. For example, it's the same old story: the man she's in love with is married. We also very often say the same old excuse. For example, he gave the same old excuse for being late, traffic jam. Recur year in and year out. Recur means occur again. For example, some of our dreams recur. 我们的一些梦会重现 The anti-war theme recurs throughout his writings. Means, in all his writings, you can find the anti-war theme. 反战的主题在他的写作中反复出现 Year in and year out is a fixed phrase, meaning every year. Similarly, day in and day out means every day. We resolve to get up earlier each morning. Resolve means we determine to do something. For example, she resolved never to speak to him again. You can also use a that clause to express the same thing. She resolved that she would never speak to him again. We remain inveterate smokers. Inveterate means deep-rooted. It's a disapproving word. For example, he is an inveterate liar, means he keeps lying all the time. He is an inveterate talker, meaning somebody who loves talking all the time. She had an inveterate fondness for expensive shoes. She liked expensive shoes all the way through. We have often experienced the frustration that results from failure. Frustration here means the distress that results from failure. For example, he watched in frustration as his team lost again. Watched in distress, 沮丧的观看 But in this example, the frustration of his ambition made him a bitter man. 他的雄心没有能够实现，于是他对凡事都不满。Because our schemes are too ambitious, scheme here means the plans. Scheme can both mean the plans to do good or to do harm. Look at these examples. There's a new scheme in our town for recycling plastic bottles. 我们的城市有一个新计划，要再回收塑料瓶。He's got another crazy scheme for getting rich. Scheme here refers to a self-interested plan. We never have time to carry them out. Carry out means to realize such schemes. 
We often use these objects after carry out. Carry out a plan, carry out a survey, or carry out an order. Or carry out a promise, 实现一个诺言 Look at this example. We only hope that the kidnappers will not carry out their threat to kill the hostage, which means we hope that they will not really kill the hostage as they threatened. The fundamental error. Fundamental means the most basic. We can often say. The fundamental problem, fundamental change means a thorough change, or fundamental difference. We slip back into our bad old ways. Slip back into means we pick up our old habits gradually. Look at these examples. It amazed him how easily one could slip into a routine, which means. How easily one could gradually form a routine. The economy seemed to slip back into recession, which means seemed to go back gradually into recession. 逐渐的又变成衰退状态 I attempted to keep my resolutions to myself. Keep to myself means to keep them secret. Not to share them with other people. For example, keep the news to yourself means don't tell others. She is a very private person, always keeping things to herself, meaning she is not used to sharing things with other people. Two modest ambitions. Modest means not large. Either in size or scale or amount or price. For example, house prices rose by a modest amount last year. 去年房价涨了不多的一个数量 There has been a modest improvement in living conditions of the poor, which means the improvement is not big. To read more of an evening. Of an evening means often in the evenings. Similarly, of a weekend means often at weekends. For example, she likes to do shopping of a weekend. I applied myself assiduously to the task. Apply oneself to something means work very hard at something. Notice that apply to. Means differently from apply oneself to. Apply to means to put something into use. For example, his project is concerned with applying the technology to practical business problems. 他的项目呢是关于把技术应用到实际的商业操作上 But in this example, it's the phrase of apply oneself to something. He immediately applied himself to the investigation, which means he immediately worked very hard at the investigation. I proposed to do them early in the morning. Propose here means intent, but it's a formal use. The other meaning of propose is suggest. Let's look at these examples. I do not propose to reveal details at this stage. 目前我还不打算揭露细节 Here, propose means intent. He proposed that I should become his business partner. Here, propose means suggest, but notice propose means after careful consideration, then suggest. Compare suggest. She suggested that we should buy a new car. It may not necessarily be a careful consideration. It was this that betrayed me. Betray here means it was the fact that I was very tired that revealed my New Year resolutions to my family. The meaning of betray, most basically, is not loyal, 背叛 For example, 
He was accused of betraying his country during the war. 他被指控叛国 If he is nervous on stage, he doesn't betray it. Betray here means show, as the text does. 如果他在台上紧张的话，他并没有表现出来。I fended off the taunts and jibes of the family. Fended off means I managed to avoid or to fight with. So fend off, you can use fend off to say fend off somebody, which means sent away, or fend off something, which means to avoid. For example, she spent the entire evening fending off the unwanted visitors. Which means sending the unwanted visitors away. He looked relaxed as he fended off questions from the press. Fend off here means he managed to avoid questions. Good humouredly means cheerfully. Humoured here means in certain kind of mood. Good humoured is its adjective. For example. Whatever happened, she was always remarkably good-humored. 好脾气的 We can also express it with a prepositional phrase, in a good humor, or in a bad humor, or in an ill humor. For example, she was still not clear why he had been in such ill humor yesterday. 她现在也不清楚为什么她昨天的脾气这么坏 The time I spend at exercises gradually diminished. Diminish means become smaller or become shorter. For example, the value of a house has diminished greatly or sharply over the last six months. 急剧贬值 Diminish can also mean become weaker or less important. For example. What he did has seriously diminished him in many people's eyes. I argued that if I spent less time exhausting myself, I would keep my mind fresh for reading. Here, I argued means I reasoned. We know that argue can mean disagree. For example, the couple next door were arguing all the time. Here, argue means quarrel. He argued that we should take immediate action. Argue here can mean reason, as the text does. This text is written in a humorous tone. How is the sense of humor achieved? One thing the author does is to use some impersonal expressions. For example. The same old favorites recur. Here, the same old favorites is an impersonal expression, but very colloquial, meaning the same old resolutions. We have become so very familiar with them. And in this one, after jumping about and twisting the human frame, here the human frame is impersonal. But we know from the context that it actually means the author's body, so that this formal expression achieves a humorous effect. And in this sentence, the whole family trooped in to watch the performance. The performance refers to what I did as exercises. Again, the impersonality makes the tone humorous. The self-discipline required to drag myself out of bed, eleven minutes earlier than usual, was considerable. The self-discipline required, it's formal and impersonal, but it's used to describe such a minor thing, meaning actually how very difficult it was for him to get up a little bit earlier than usual. I'm sure the author's experience is not strange to you. We make resolutions ourselves, not only on the New Year's Day, but in our daily lives as well. 
but all these resolutions are usually very difficult to be realized. So in English, there's a saying, promises are made to be broken. Because our habits are usually too deep-rooted to be changed, we want to get out of the bad habits and get into the good habits. But very often, we only slip back into the old habits. But no matter, when the next New Year comes, we still make these resolutions. Just as the text says, the same old favorites recur every year. At least we can comfort ourselves by saying, we know in what way we should improve ourselves. Okay, so much for this lesson. Bye for now.